Malaysia's got it standing right here. All the children of Moana knew we are care. Papa and mother walk here, sky father, Pacific Ocean, sisters and brothers. Hey. I have not seen you for so long. Ah, what this Pohaku has seen, yeah? Every island has so many sacred Pohaku, and this is one of Molokai's Pohaku Havanavana, or the Whispering Rock. It was believed that the people of Od would come up from the Makai, the ocean side, and say what they needed to the rock of what they needed from the uplands, and the message would be carried on the wind. And the people from the uplands would come down and leave that gift for the Makai people, and they would whisper. And tell them the pohaku what they needed from Makai and so gifts would be left here and they would take care of each other just because of this beautiful beautiful pohaku right here pohaku havana vana the whispering rock well aloha mai kako before we move on with this episode about pohaku let's practice our ho'olaloho so remember e ho'opili mai repeat after me and I have my kako o mai kokua back here all right makauko hi pohaku Pohaku. Pohaku is a stone, rock, or pebble. Papaha naumoku. Papaha naumoku. She's the earth mother, the mother of most of the Hawaiian islands, and what we call the earth beneath our feet. Poe ai pohaku. Poe ai pohaku. Poe ai poe means people, ai means to eat, pohaku means stone. It means the people who eat stone, and the Kanaka Maoli, the Hawaiian people, refer to themselves as that. We'll learn more about that soon. Pohaku kui ai. Pohaku kui ai. That's a poi pounder. Papohaku. Papohaku. That's a rock wall. Meai. Meai. Food. Imu. Imu. Imu is an earth oven, what we love to cook. Lao lao, kalo pig, kalo, all our yummy goodness inside of. Next word is nalako. Nalako. Those are tools or supplies. Loikalo. Loikalo. Loikalo is a taro patch. Awai. Awai. Awai is an irrigation ditch, usually leading into a loikalo. Loko ia. Loko ia. Loko ia is a fish pond. Let's go on to the next side. Mea kaua. Mea kaua. Weapons. Ma'a. Ma'a. That's a sling. Koi. Koi. Koi is basalt stone or an adze. They would usually use basalt stone to make an adze, so it's the same name. Ahu. Ahu. Ahu is an altar or a shrine used for worship or ceremony. Heyo. Heyo. A high place of worship. Vai. Vai. Fresh water. Muliwai. Muliwai. Muliwai is the area where the stream or the river feeds into the ocean. And that's where you'll find the brackish water or the vaikai. But the area is muliwai. Try it one more time. Muliwai. Muliwai. Maikai no. Ili ili. Ili ili. Those are river rocks and pebbles by the muliwai. Those soft, round, flat ones. Hale. Hale. And that's a house or a shelter. Hello. Hello. Hello is a house for canoes or hula. It's a meeting house. It's usually long and open. Kui. Kui. That means to hit or pound. Enjoy the show! After the overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom in 1893, Mrs. Ellen Prendergast wrote the famous song Kaulana Napua, formerly known as Mele Aloha Aina, the patriotic song for our imprisoned queen Lili Uokalani. One of the most powerful lines in this song claims, Ualava Mako Ikapohaku, meaning we are satisfied with the rocks. It was a way of showing resistance towards American rule. However, the new government prohibited the band from playing any Hawaiian music after the overthrow and actually renamed the band the Government Band. So upon receiving the song sheet, the band members were given two options by their bandmaster. One, sign annexation papers, relinquish queen and country, become citizen of the fake Republic of Hawaii, or two, not sign annexation papers and be left to eat stones. They all chose to be poe ai pohaku, loyal to queen, kingdom, and land. Until this day, we know that our land is worth more than their mountains of money. If we choose the land, the land will always feed us. 
have been here for a really, 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 really long time, way before humans. In Hawaii, we respect and honor Pohaku as our kupuna, our elders that were here long before we were. Pohaku hold the mana and ability to create land, feed us, and provide the building blocks for our world. Which makes me wonder, what are different ways civilizations have used rocks around the world? Aloha, this is Ilikia with If You Don't Know, Now You Mo Popo, Pohaku. The Stone Age was a period when man began to use stone as tools. It may have started millions of years ago, but it only ended in 2500 BC, a mere 4520 years ago. Stone Age people made their own tools, which is why it's called the Stone Age. They weren't experts at stonework, but they mostly made tools like stone or wooden clubs, bone needles, bone flutes, stone axes, stone knives, and even bow and arrows. Cave paintings date from 10,000 to 20,000 years ago. The elders are from about 32,000 years ago. Many are in France and Spain. Over 130 pyramids have been discovered in Egypt and are made primarily of limestone. Most ancient Egyptian pyramids were built as tombs for pharaohs and their ohana. Machu Picchu in Peru is a stone structure created during the Incan Empire between the 1400s and 1500s. Each stone was precisely cut to fit together tightly, and no mortar was needed to keep the wall standing. Now, most of Polynesia, Pohaku are called Pohatu. That totally rocks! All pohaku in all forms, whether rocks, stones, or pebbles, are shaped over time by different natural elements. Whether it's the constant flow of water in a running stream, millennia of weathering from wind, rain, earthquakes, and landslides, pohaku are bio-indicators of the environment from which they were formed. In Hawaii, the ili'ili are only found where estuaries exist, in the area called muliwai where the streams and rivers meet the ocean. The ebb and flow of fresh water and salt water coming together creating vaikai or brackish water gently smooths away and shapes almost all ili'ili into flat oval-like rocks. It's said that ili'ili can give birth to new ili'ili. If you take a female ili'ili with holes and a male ili'ili that is completely smooth, then put them together in the stream in time. The female ili'ili's holes will fill up with tiny little pebble bits, believed to be their keiki. What a sweet ili'ili love story. Mwah. Well, aloha mai kako. Today we're going to be talking about the magnificent mana of pohatu. Pohatu. All the magnificence of pohatu. So we, re we just wanted to talk on... Uh, of a little bit about how the Kanaka Maori or the Hawaiian people use pohaku in our culture, many different ways. These are the main ways that we use it to make tools or nalako, heiau and ahu, ceremonial structures. We also use it to make nameakaua or weapons for vai, directing and containing water. Also for hale and halau, which are so, like sheltering structures. We use it mostly for the foundation. And then me'ai, our food production. And we use it in our lo'ikalo, our local i'a, and so many other ways that we're going to talk about. But we wanted to compare how Kanaka Maoli use pohaku as um, to other people around the world, other cultures around the world. And we chose to, to compare it to cultures that we either have in our um, you know, genealogy or we visited. So let's go, let's go visit around the planet. First, we're gonna to go to Aotearoa. We're gonna talk about the mere. The mere is a weapon. 
How did they use the mere, Hanohana? A mere is a broad bladed shaped oversized teardrop. Mm. A mere though was made of pohaku, not only pohaku, but made of ponamu. Yep. Ponamu. These are little stone. ones, little meres. Obsidian, found in the rivers of South Island. This is mere mere to a yahi. From Sheraton. So the mere, or the, 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 the flat bladed club, was used to strike somebody's body or the po'o. My Maori cousin said that this is like a can opener. <laughs> For a po'o. Ooh, a wee. Which brings us to Puerto Rico, where my ancestors are friend, from, Borinquen. Mm -hmm. And it's a Taino Makano War Club. And as you can see, the, the front of it is carved pohaku. Oh my God. Yeah. And you know, when, when the conquistadors tried to take over the Caribbean, which is where the Taino are from, um, they, they was getting lickings by this stuff. And it was like, oh, they're too rebellious. We got to bring African slaves. So that's how the next wave of, of uh, slaves came over, but they couldn't tame the Taino. They would go run to the mountains and they became the Hibaro, the mountain people, which is who I come from. Yeah. Yes. Hibaro, Guazabara. <laughs> Guazabara. 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 Okay, we're gonna talk about Ili Ili, Ili Ili rocks. So Ili Ili was used by us Kanaka as bullets. Mm. Bullets for a, a sling. Yeah, Hawaiians used to sling stones. I was pretty good at them yep. when I had mine. Yeah. But they used to use ili ili, put them in a sling, and start nailing guys Ooh. from far distance. Hawaiians went way past that, though. Yes, so yes, yes. the Great, when he had his cannon, they decided to do something new. Instead of bombing them with one big one, they decided to put plenty choke ili ili. ili, ili choke ili ili. Wrap them choke, up in copper. Choke. Like choke. Choke. Wrap them in copper and then stick them down the barrel of a cannon. Yeah. Let's watch, let's so watch this animation. Get ready. You guys are going to catch yeah. a mile. Get ready, baby. <laughs> Keep them. <laughs> Owie. Ili, Ili. Owie. Owie. Yes. Thank you, baby, for blowing everybody in their face. <laughs> Which brings us to the lako or tools, which are very, very similar to weapons, but they are not weapons. Yes. So we're going to talk about the koi. In Aotearoa, around the Pacific, some, some cultures call it the toki. And this is one made of konabu. And this is actually how he proposed to me. Yeah. He gave this to me yes. from Pop, Pops. Uncle yeah. Louis Pops Moel. And to all the brothers and titas, El, Amo, I love you guys. But Pops Moel, he said, boy, you can use this, this will caught you. And this, you can find your, your new life and you can carve out a new way of life. So I'm gonna ask this beautiful wahine right is Borinqua, if she would, my, the kind. If this is my wedding ring. She, yeah, that was her wedding ring. If <laughs> you would come and we will carve us a new life. Yes, and this koi is from Rapa Nui. Yeah. But the one in the picture is from Hawaii, and they're all very similar. And koi have been used all around the planet, and they're made out of this special koi or basalt stone. So this is what a blaze of koi looks like before it's carved out into something like that. For so valuable. So valuable. Years, and thousands. all throughout Hawaii, you'll find the koi stones on the west side, the older part of the islands, because that's the older side, and the east side is more brand new. So that, again, we're going to visit Puerto Rico, yep. and we're going to talk about the manaya. Manaya or the Taino stone axe. Yep. It's a kelp um, or petaloid shaped axe head. Almost like this. Almost like the, the, the mere, but used more in this fashion. Right. Attached to wood or like the picture, the whole thing is pohaku. Ooh. Oh. That's mean. I don't want to get hit by that one. No, I know. That's what I mean. Like, there's tools and weapons. Yes. So we're going to come to me. I let's just be a little bit more zen like. And let's talk about me. So, pohaku was used all throughout Hawaii to make food. We used it in the fish ponds. We used it in the taro patches. We used it um, to make imu. We also used it to prepare food with a pohaku kui ai. Yep. And a pohaku kui ai was used to pound either ulu or kalo or uwala, all of our starches, yeah? 
and it would make, uh, we would eat it every day. Pa'i'ai was the first stage of pounding kalo, and it's that nice, beautiful, thick stuff. Mm. Oh, and it had the imu flavor, everything. Oh, I broke the mouth. And then the next stage, when you want to stretch it out, because poi wasn't, I mean, you couldn't get pa'i'ai too much. It was hard to get. So they would stretch them out. You add water, and it becomes poi. That's yeah. the difference. So how did they use the, the pohaku in China to make food? Well, we'll give a big up to our Chinese oh, yeah. roots. Yes, we bought pake. We bought pake. Chang. Oot, oot. Yep. Yuen. Oot, oot. Oot, oot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is a cheng ku. Cheng what you're looking at on the, on the, on the screen. Yeah. Um, but this is like a little, um, this is throughout history and humans in general, they Same have idea, used yeah. uh, motor and pestle to grind herbs, medicine, yeah. um, spices. The food processor. Yeah. The thing works. Yeah. Still yet. Um, just wanting to throw a big up to my uncle who had passed away in July, July 20th. My uncle Bruce. Bruce who? Bruce Lee. Oh, yeah. July 20th, 1973. <laughs> here in Market. But I yes. love you. Oh, yes. One of our greatest kumu, yeah? Um, so that's going to bring us to vibe. Like water. What would he say? Flow like water. Be um, like water. Yeah, be like water, Uncle yeah. Bruce. Uncle. Yeah, so brings us to the Vai, directing and containing water. So we're going to talk about Hawaii and how we use the Hawaii and the Lo'ikalo. You want to talk a little bit about how we use Pohaku well, to make food like that? They said, if you visited Hawaii in, in, in the ancient days, in the Vakaiko, and you saw the Hawaii, the Lo'is, and the rock work, you would be amazed because this type of moving water irrigation ditch system was on the same page as the ancient Roman aqueduct right. system. And they actually compare it to Okinawa too, which is the other picture because they're like in the top three um, permaculture cultures on the planet. Okinawa, Hawaii, right? Yep, and that's all in me in Cause, one. Because they knew how to direct the water. So to all my cousins you know, love the Aina. in Okinawa, we're going to make our lo'is, put them back, just like how you guys get your rice patties over there. Yes. And to my cousin Naruto, you know, in the Leaf Village, aloha, you guys. That's the dream. That's the dream. That's the dream. So let's move right on there. to hale and halau, or shelter. Yep. So the first example you're very intimate with, it is the halau, or the longhouse, or shelter at, at Kiabanui. Kiabanui. Every um, foundation, the base of your hale is always with pohaku. Right. Right, so we built that at Kiavanui, the Pohaku, right around our halau, you know, our, our teaching area, our long house, our shelter. And a uh, quick fact, 20 plus years ago when we first built that, we had help from the king of Thailand and his group of uh, cabinet members. Right. Over 20 of them. And it's wonderful, I just want to follow my good friend, Weed Rat. Wow. That's cool. That's cool. Okay, that that brings us to Rapa Nui, some place that we we love and we've been to, and Ranukau Orongo houses. Now these houses are built into the side of a volcano, and um they're used during the Birdman ceremonies that they would have annually, and it would crown this new chief for the year, right? Yep. And they would all camp out in these hale, these. They look like hobbit houses, really. And you got to crawl in. So then if an invader come in, oh, pal, you're not going to get away with sneaking and robbing your house. You know what I mean? Because this head got to come in first. Yeah. Smart. Real smart. Amazing. Fantastic. Unbelievable. Hollies made of pohaku. Right. Architecture. Yep. So amazing. All right. Now we're going to talk about heyo and ahu, or ceremonial structures. So we've been to some special places, and um, Rapa Nui is one of them. And we got to see the Moai in person. In the picture, you'll see Ranoraraku, which is a volcano where they get all the Moai carved out of because it has a soft, tough rock. So some of these Moai never made it out away from the volcano. They're still there, like in the picture. Like we're tripping out. Like so many Moai that are still some cracked, some fell down, some still halfway carved into the mountain. And then, then we went to go visit uh, Ahu Tongariki, and those are the only Moai shown behind us in the picture that are facing inland. <laughs> Otherwise, they always face out into the ocean. So, you want to share some stuff about the Moai? The Moai or monolithic human carvings um, carved out of tough stone mm -hmm. by our cousins 
from Rapa Nui uh, in Eastern Polynesia between mm -hmm. the years 1250 and 1500. Um, these carvings were taken to different ahu or burial sites around the island. Far away. Hundreds. Far away. Hundreds. Real far away. These moai are carved actually in the resemblance or in the, in, 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 in the memory of a kupuna that right. just passed. Right. So it's like a matriarch or a patriarch of the family that they deify or they lift up to like an aumakua status in mm -hmm. Hawaiian culture, kind of similar to that. And so the ones that have the red top knot, like my hair is right now, is wahine. Yeah. That's what the, the Rapa Nui people told us. And it's made out of red cinder block. So it's a different type of pohaku. So it's tuft for the body and then the red cinder for the the hair, the lawoho. The greatest kupuna got memorialized in I these know. in these carvings yeah. of stone. Yes, of yes. And so that brings us to one of our most kapu places, our most kapu heiau, one of our most kapu heiau in all of Hawaii, Pu'ukohola. And Hano has a very special pilina or connection to Pu'ukohola. Can you share that? So Pu'ukohola um, was built by Kamehameha the Great in 1790, 1791. It was dedicated to the war god, Kuka Ilimoku. That's the Ilili Cannon guy. Same guy. Same guy. Strategist. Warrior. Hi, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Anyway, this Heiau was used to unite the islands. And this Heiau, the walls are 16 to 20 feet high. And I actually got a chance to help restore these walls after it got damaged from the earthquake. Right. But the most amazing part of Pu Kohola was that it was built from rocks that were transported from the valley of Pololu. That's far away. 25 miles away by Palihali Pohaku, human chain passing Pohaku 25 miles to create one of the largest heiaus in all right. of Hawaii. So again, just like the Rapa Nui, you know, we had, we did amazing things with Pohaku. And now you can understand why we believe mana hold, they, the pohaku hold mana. They hold mana. Yes. So we have to respect them as such. They give us everything we need to survive. So pu'ukohola and the hale, they're real similar to how you build the kind of um, fish pond wall, the kwa right? Aye. Yeah. Super similar. And in fact, we're going to have a demonstration just for you guys. Cool. Enjoy. How do you sort rocks and build a pa pohaku? Types of pohaku to build a pa, you need ili ili, which are small river rocks and can fit in one hand. You also need haka haka, which are medium sized rocks that can fit in two hands. And last, you need niho, which are huge rocks that usually take a couple people to carry. Once you have those three types of rocks, you're ready to build a pa pohaku. Now we're going to look at how you place the rocks. Let's look at the bottom. It says, first, let's put the niho on the bottom. Those are the hugest rocks. So you're going to need a lot of help. Those are all the gray and black rocks on the bottom. Second, put the haka haka on top of the niho. Those are all the brown rocks in the middle, the medium-sized rocks. Third, lastly, put the ili ili on top. All the little rocks to fill in all the pukas. You can cover the whole top and your pa pohaku will be complete. Now we know how to build a papo haku for a loko ia. Kui at the capital, kui at the capital. You hear the sound of rolling thunder, kick you make it party eye in the road thunder. Kui at the capital. There is nothing more fine now than when everybody aloha aina. E gui gui gato, e gui gui gato, e hapai luna, e gui lalo, aloha na kekia, aloha ike kalo. Children of Kanaloa, Kane Kuhina and Lono, help to make a situation little bit more porno. Speak with wisdom, up against the system, fight for freedom, for the Hawaiian kingdom. By good upbringing, we get heart and brain. Don't be scared of shame, we'll bring the pain. Our land we must retain, regain, reclaim. Spreading for no messages across all terrain. Aloha Aina, know the name. Don't you hate the players, you hate the game. 
Pohaku, stones, rocks, pebbles, capsules holding a secret with mana and wanting to share, but only revealed if you come with the right reason, lavena and prayer. An element older than old and yet born new every day. The building blocks of culture, foundation of thriving societies. Hale, halau, heiau, lokoi'a, and lo'i. Ahu, awai, ma'apohaku ku'iai, and ko'i. Holding whispered secrets of the past, solid, solemn, and lonely. Yearning to hear the frequency of a familiar oli. One is absent without the other, and all by itself cold and empty. But you put them together forever, imagine the possibilities. Mama Earth, Papa Hanau Moku, and Kanaka living sustainably. Third rock from the sun, the best place in the Milky Way galaxy. The children, I see the light. Courage, culture, hope, love, shining so bright. It's a delight if you ever get the sight to see the fire in our cakey spirit ignite.